Hey, what's going on everybody? And welcome to part two of how to make Flappy Bird using Swift 2 with Xcode. Today we'll be focusing on how to move your pipes and also spawn them repeatedly, and also how to start the game only when you tap the screen. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead, open up our Flappy Clone.Xcode project that we created in part one. If you have not seen part one, go check it out now or else none of this will make sense. And now that we have this open, let's go ahead, make it a bit bigger, head over to our Flappy Clone, and we're gonna go over to the game scene.swift. So now that we're inside of our game scene.swift, what we want to accomplish in this part is to move the pipes and spawn the pipes. So first thing, we're gonna go right down here to our create walls and we're gonna delete that little statement right there. And instead of that, we actually want an action to call when it does spawn. So let's go right in here and we're going to say let spawn equal sk action dot run block and we're going to run the block. Now basically what a block does, it's a group of instructions that we want to do when this is called. Now in this case when we run the block we just want it to actually create walls. So we're going to say open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket and we want to add parentheses so just say open close parentheses and then in and inside of this block essentially anything that we put inside of here now is going to be run when we call this spawn action that's created. So we want it to call our create walls so you could just just say create walls but that actually does not work because we are using a run block so we actually want to be safe here and we want to say self dot create walls like so so now anytime the spawn is called it's going to create a wall for us now we actually need to call this spawn action so in order for us to do this we're first going to create a delay so this delay is going to be the interval between your wall and your second wall that comes up or your third wall and fourth wall and so on and so forth so we have let delay and we're going to set our delay equal to sk action dot wait for duration and we're going to make it wait for the duration of two seconds and now with these spawn and delay functions that we just created, we now want to apply this into a sequence. So we're going to say let spawn delay, and we're gonna make this equal to an skaction.sequence. Now the sequence in here is going to be, of course, the sequence of our spawn and our delay. So we're gonna say open close brackets right there, and we're gonna say spawn, and then comma, delay. So that's our little sequence that's going on. Now with this spawn and delay function, we're going to make this happen forever. So I'm going to say let spawn delay forever equal sk action dot repeat action forever. And we're going to repeat the action of our spawn delay like so. So essentially what we're doing here, we have this spawn delay forever action and we're going to make it repeat this action, this spawn delay action right here forever. Now we actually want to run this action. So I'm going to say self dot run action and we're going to run the action of our spawn delay forever like so so now we have everything spawning but now we actually want our pipes to move so we're going to go right down here and first off we want to create a distance so we're going to say let distance equal and we're going to make this equal to our cg float open parentheses and this is going to be equal to our self dot frame dot width and now with this we want it to go slightly over the distance so we can easily just say plus 20 or if you want to be more precise let's go ahead and go down here to our create walls now inside of our create walls right here i'm going to take this let wall pair equal sk node i'm going to copy that delete it and then i'm going to go over here to my game scene and just paste it right up there now the way I did this right now is actually going to give you an error. So let's go ahead and take this little part right here without the let value and we're going to copy that and we're going to paste that right down here again. That way we're just editing the wall pair itself. And now this is giving me an error because it doesn't want it to be a let value, it wants to be a variable because we are changing it later on. So let's go up here to our game scene and we're going to say var wall pair equals sk node. And now back to the distance right down here. So we're just going to say let distance equals cg float self dot frame dot width plus our wall pair dot frame dot width. So that is the distance we want to move. Now we actually want to move our pipes accordingly. So we're going to say let move pipes equal sk action dot move by x. And now with this delta x value, this is essentially which direction would we like our thing to move in the x value position. We want this to move by our negative distance. So we're wanting it to move from right to left, not left to right. That's why we put a negative in front of it. Now we go over to our y value and we're just going to make this a zero. We don't want this to move by any y value whatsoever. Our time interval right here, you can set this to whatever you want, but I'm going to set this equal to 0.01 and multiply that by our distance. Now you can make this faster if you wanna like add more to the distance, or you can even just change this number right here just to a two, and that'll make it go a little bit faster, or you can make it 0.005 and make it go slower. 
Either way, it's 0 0.01 times the distance. Now it's giving me an error because what I was expecting was a time interval. So what we need to do here is actually say NS time interval like so, and then just say open parentheses and then put all this stuff that we created earlier inside of that, like so. Then after this, we need to remove the pipes after they've moved off the screen. So we need to say let remove pipes equal sk action dot remove from parent, like so. Now with this, we also wanna create a sequence just like we did with our delay and our spawn delay. But with the action that we're creating, we actually wanna go right up here and make this public so we can call it later on. So this will be a variable and this will be our move and remove variables. So this will be var move and remove will be equal to sk action and then open close parentheses. Now we need to go down here to our project and actually add stuff inside of that move and remove variable. So we're gonna go right down here and say move and remove will be equal to an sk action dot sequence. And we're gonna make this a sequence by going open bracket, close bracket, and this will be our move pipes, a true or false statement. So we're going to say var game started and we're going to set this equal to a bool value. So this is going to be a true or false statement, hence bool. So now when the view loads, I don't want this to move at all. So let's go right down here to our touches began. And right in here, I'm going to say if the game started is equal equal to false, then we want to do this stuff in here. Else, if that is not true, then we want to do this other stuff. So if the game started equals equals false, this of course means the game has just loaded and this is the first time you're going to play. Now, what do you want inside of each of these if and else statements? Well, I'm going to move my delay and stuff like this into my first statement. So I'm going to just copy that, delete all of that and move that right into my if statement that says if the game started equal equal false. Like so, just paste that right in there. And then also with this, I want my ghost to jump at the very start. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy that and just move that right into my first if statement, like so. So this is all happening right after you personally have started the game. Now in the else statement, we don't really want much happening other than the ghost jumping. So I'm just going to put that right in there. Now this is because we only want this stuff to be called once. And we'll deal with this if and else statement a bit more in a different tutorial when we actually create the end scene. That way we can restart our game. So now let's go ahead, build and run this. And now as you can see, as soon as the game loads, nothing is happening until I press the screen, then we should be able to see our pipes coming in, like so. Now another thing you might notice is that there's tons of pipes coming in when you just click a bunch. Now this is specifically for the reason we need to go back here and we never changed our game started equal to true. So let's go right down here to our if statement, game started equals equals false. We're gonna say game started is equal to true now. So now if we were to build and run this, we won't get that many pipes anymore. So now we can build and run this and as you will see not a ton of pipes coming at me this time. Now another thing I noticed is that this ghost falls down as soon as the game loads and we don't want that to happen either. So in order to fix this let's go over to our ghost in our did move to view and we're gonna say ghost.physicsbody.affected by gravity we're gonna set this equal to false. And now we need to set this equal to true when the touches begin. So let's head over to our touches began and we're just gonna say ghost.physicsbody dot affected by gravity and we're going to set this equal to true now and now if we were to build and run this as you can see our ghost is right there he's just hovering right above the surface and now we can press play and he starts getting affected by gravity and we start jumping and another thing i want to do with all these pipes that are spawning i want them to be in random locations so let's head back over to our project and what i'd like to do is actually just create a function that picks a random number to between negative 200 and 200. Now in order to do this, let's actually go up here and I'm gonna say file, new, file. This will be a Swift file, go ahead, click next. I'm just gonna save this as my random function. You can of course call that whatever you want. Let's go ahead and create that. And now inside of my random function, what I want this to be is an extension of a CG float. Now essentially what a CG float is, it's a 32-bit number. So we wanna basically create a random 32-bit number that's between negative 200 and 200. Now in order to accomplish this, let's go ahead and say import core graphics, like so. And then inside of this, what I want is to create a public extension. Now this extension is going to be an extension upon CG float. So I'm going to say public extension and then CG float, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Now the first thing I wanna do in here is create a randomizer. So we're gonna say public static func and we're just gonna call this our random function. And then open close parentheses, and we want it to return a CG float value, so we're gonna put an arrow like that, and then CG float. And then open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Now inside of this, we of course wanna return a CG float value. So we wanna say return CG float, 
and then open parentheses, we want this to be a float value inside of here. Now there's a couple differences between CG float and float. You can read about them if you want, but I'm just gonna quickly go over this. So CG float and then float and then say open parentheses and we wanna pick a random 32-bit number. So we wanna say arc for random like so and then open close parentheses. So this arc for random here is creating a random number. Now what we wanna do with this number is create it into a 32-bit number. So we're gonna say arc for random and then we're gonna divide this by 0xf times 8. So 0x and then we have 8 f's as you can see here. And then we can just go ahead, close those parentheses, and that should erase any errors that we're having. Now another function we want to create is a minimum and maximum value random. So we're gonna say public static and then func and we're going to call this one a random, but we're gonna say in this one, open parentheses, and we're gonna give this a min, min. So what we have right here is we have min and min. So the first minimum is actually just text that's going to be displayed when we run this. And our second minimum is actually going to be a CG float value. Then after that, we just put comma, and then we're also going to create a maximum value. And this of course will be a CG float value as well. Then we close that up and put an arrow, and we're gonna say CG float. So we want this to be a returning a CG float value then go open curly bracket close curly bracket so inside of here we want it to return a random number between our minimum and our maximum so we're gonna say return CG float dot random and then we're going to multiply that by our open close parentheses this will be our max minus our minimum and then we're also going to add our minimum again that way we just keep that way we just keep it so it's not a negative value or it doesn't go above or below what we're trying to get now let's go back over to our game scene swift and we're gonna go right down here to our wall pair so so we're gonna say var random position, and we're gonna make this equal to a CG float, and then we're gonna also use this function that we just created. So we're gonna say dot random, and actually before we continue on, let's go back over to our random function dot swift and just hit command S. That way it saves the file. Go back over to our game scene dot swift, go over to CG float, and we're gonna say CG float dot random, and then we should have this option here that says minimum and maximum. So we're creating a minimum of negative 200, and our maximum will be 200. Like like so. So we're picking a random position between negative 200 and 200. Now you can make these lengths a bit greater if you want, especially if you have a smaller gap, but this is the way I like it and that's how I'm going to do it. So now we're going to apply this random position to our wall pair. So I'm going to say wall pair dot position dot y will be equal to, and you're gonna make this equal to our wall pair dot position dot y plus our random position that we just created. So now if we were to build and run this, we should actually get some random heights of each of these bars that are being created now. As you can see. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this Flappy Bird tutorial series. If there's anything that you want added in this tutorial series, be sure to leave that down in the comment section down below. Also, if you have any questions, be sure to leave that down there as well. If you want to keep up with me on a daily basis, my Twitter handle is at Twitter. Whoa, no. If you want to keep up with me on a daily basis, my Twitter handle is at Architap. You can follow me there. Again, thank you all so much, and I will see you in the next one.